A septoplasty is a surgery that straightens a crooked or deviated nasal septum. The surgery should not change the facial appearance. If the outside of a person's nose is also crooked, the surgeon may recommend a septorhinoplasty, also called a nose job. The septum is a tissue that is in the middle of the nose. The front part of the septum is made up of cartilage, and the back part is made up of bone. The septum is often not straight, called a nasal septal deviation. The deviation can be present at birth or can be caused by trauma. If a person has a deviated septum, they may struggle to breathe through one or both nostrils. Nasal congestion can be present during the daytime, but it may also be present during sleep, making it challenging to get good quality sleep. A healthcare provider can see the septal deviation by looking inside the nose with a handheld light. Medications such as sinus rinses, nasal steroids, and allergy medications may be tried for four to six weeks. If the patient still has trouble breathing, they may be referred to an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. The surgeon will evaluate the patient and will likely perform nasal endoscopy, a procedure in which they look into the nose and the back of the throat using a scope. If there is difficulty in evaluating the nasal cavities or they see sinusitis, the surgeon may order a CT scan. The surgeon will make recommendations as to whether the patient is a candidate for a septoplasty with turbinoplasties and whether any other surgeries are indicated, such as possible sinus surgery or possible adenoidectomy. This will depend on the findings during the physical exam or the CT scan. A septoplasty is performed in the operating room. An incision is made inside the nose. The crooked septal cartilage and bone are removed. The incisions are closed. Inferior turbinoplasties may be performed by either poking into the inferior turbinates using radiofrequency ablation or using a technique that will reduce the size from the inside such as the use of a microdebrider or a similar device. After those procedures, the inferior turbinates are often pushed out to the sides, termed outfracturing. Nasal splints may be placed inside the nose. If so, they are often removed within the first seven days following the surgery. The risks of surgery include bleeding, infection, failure to improve breathing significantly, a septal perforation, a cerebral spinal fluid leak, or scar tissue formation inside the nose. After removal of the splint, sometimes the nasal congestion worsens temporarily for a few weeks to months. Then the swelling goes away. If the patient has persistent nasal congestion, sometimes a surgeon may recommend a septorhinoplasty, also called a nose job, depending on the anatomy of the nose. The information in this video is for educational purposes only. Only your healthcare provider can provide you with specific information depending on your history and physical exam. They will review the risks, benefits, and alternatives with you. The illustrations and content were provided by Dr. Camacho.